you know how I love covering privacy projects. I'm in Pirate Chain. I've covered other privacy protocols like Secret Network. Well, in this video, I'm going to be talking to a brand new privacy project that's part of the Cosmos ecosystem. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Ready to hop in the 6 4 and cruise around the blocks. There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustle. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the dope wars world. Hey, BitSquid, thank you so much for making yourself available. You are one of the team at Void Protocol, voidprotocol.io. I'll have all the links in the description below. Now, if you could just give like a soundbite and, and then we'll dig into Void Protocol. What is so great about Void Protocol? Yeah, of course. So uh, Void Protocol is building a decentralized opt-in financial privacy service for the entire Cosmos ecosystem built on Osmosis. A decentralized privacy financial ecosystem for the entire Cosmos e Cosmos project and based in on top of Osmosis. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, all right. Well, let's start off by saying, what is it you do at Void Protocol? What's your role? Yeah. So um, one of the sort of two in the founding team. Uh, I I'm essentially just a project coordinator. I keep everything moving in the right direction. All the team focusing on the correct goals, uh, a lot of the business development and sort of idea and logic formation as well. Okay, so you're one of the co-founders, and um, so then you'd know a bit about Void Protocol. So, yeah, so what, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So what is Void Protocol? Yeah, so um, we've essentially adopted um, the pre-existing um, Mixer template that we've seen for privacy on many different ecosystems, I guess, primarily started by uh, Tornado um, Cash on Ethereum. Um, we've sort of seen that as a really sort of tried and tested and really simple method of obtaining individual financial privacy. Uh, we do have obviously a couple of changes just in ways that we thought that platform could be optimized on a different network. Uh, I would say primarily um, one of the biggest things we offer is yield while your funds are anonymizing. Um, so I guess for anyone who's not familiar with how that system works, uh, it's quite straightforward. Users deposit set amounts of assets um, into the smart contract. Uh, when you deposit in, you receive a cryptic phrase, keep that safe. You wait a little bit of time while your funds are in the smart contract pool, while other users uh, deposit into the pool and withdraw out of the pool. Uh, in that time, as I said, you earn in like essentially some kind of yield on your assets. And then you can, when you're ready to withdraw, nominate a brand new wallet and receive the funds there. Completely disassociates the two wallets from ever transacting between each other. Essentially, from the outside looking in, you can tell that the first wallet deposited into the void. But then after that, you cannot determine um, with high probability where the funds went. Right. Okay. So let's say I've got 100 atoms. And I want to break the chain or I want to anonymize them. Yep. So I would put it into the 100 atoms into the smart contract. I get a phrase. I wait for those 100 atoms to be mixed with other atoms that people are depositing into that smart contract. And while I'm waiting, I'd be earning a yield yep. while my atoms are in the mixer. And then at the end of that process, I get a new address to send my atom to. So does yep. that mean at the end I have to have a new wallet or something? Yeah. So the, the way this one is built, to, to keep your privacy on the other end, it's definitely advised to be a brand new wallet that's never transacted with the original wallet in any way. And that also includes, you know, transacting with the same centralized exchange right. address. Okay. Okay. And then how long would this process take, say, for 100 atom? Yeah, so it really depends heavily on the use of our platform and the TVL that's inside the smart contract. So uh, ideally, the process can be as little as just a couple of days, but 
with really low TVL, it, it could be best to be left there for a couple of weeks. Uh, that's why we've really sort of wanted to change the one factor where with a lot of the traditional platforms, the assets inside the pool do not earn any yield. And we just sort of see that as, you know, uh, opportunity cost essentially for anonymizing. And the way we view privacy, we believe that there shouldn't be an opportunity cost to anonymizing your funds, aka missing out on staking yield, mm -hmm. especially in the cosmos where a lot of the native yield from the staking is quite high. Like we see 30 something percent on osmosis, nearly 20 percent on Atom. And then when you go further and further, like Juno, uh, it gets higher and higher. Okay. And then how is the yield worked out? Is it different depending upon different assets that go in? Yeah. So the yield at the moment, because we've had to restructure a lot of our platform in the move from Terra after the Terra crash, mm -hmm. uh, we've had to restructure what our yield options look like. Uh, it's still in the planning phase, but we're heavily leaning towards enabling uh, cross-chain staking through the void pools. So essentially, Atom can be staked with Atom. Uh, Osmo can be staked with the Osmo validators and so forth. So we can actually offer the native uh, staking rates that each network offers as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So so if, what is it? I think Atom is 18% currently. So yeah. What you're looking at doing is I, if I put my, my 100 Atom into the mixer, Void Protocol mixer, then I'd be getting 18%. Yep. Pretty much. Okay. Now, We're trying to hopefully um, encourage long-term deposits into the pool uh, because that way we will be boosting TVL. If instead of users just staking natively with Atom, if they then decide to put it into the Void, they'll be getting Atom native rewards plus a little bit of additional void rewards from the void emissions. And ideally, some users will opt to leave funds in there for longer than necessary, which will boost the efficiency of the platform for all the users. Right, okay. Now, I can see, I think there may be risks with this because I'm depositing my crypto in another smart contract. And, you know, there's risk of hacks, there's risk of rug pulls. What, why, why would anybody do that and what are the guarantees plus also what are the risks? Yeah, so there, there is risks, I guess, in using any smart contract that's out there. Uh, we've taken steps to do what we can to minimize those risks in terms of getting audits done. Uh, we finished our ZK module when we were building on Terra. Uh, we got that audited and passed, but now that we're moving to Osmosis, we will get that re-audited. And then before launching, we will get a full platform audit as well. Uh, so that's just in terms of the sort of basic security things. We do have other plans in terms of uh, trying to make the platform, I guess, hack-proof to a certain extent. Uh, in terms of other risks, um, one of the main ones that these kind of platforms can see is things like your cryptic phrase being sort of, I guess, I'm trying to think of the best word for it, um, Compromised in some way? Compromised, yeah, thank you. Um, via even like internal things. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons Void uses uh, zero knowledge snarks to secure the cryptic phrase so that when the user needs to provide that, essentially the smart contract doesn't even need all of the information that the user has to unlock it. You just need a, a small portion of it. Uh, it also means that we don't have to store the cryptic phrases in some kind of centralized database, which would be a major point of failure, uh, the smart contract itself can just verify it using the uh, ZK snarks. Right. Okay. I'm going to come on to ZK snarks in a moment, right? But look, you yep. are not, you and the team are not doxxed. Now, I can understand because of your commitment to privacy, you want to keep your anonymity. But yep. there's also the risk of, uh, for users, that you guys could engage in a rug pull. Yeah, the, I mean, that risk exists with nearly every project that's out there. Uh, we, we're essentially more pseudonymous. So uh, we have this sort of wall of anonymity to the general public, but with a lot of our private investors and developers and all of the more closer sphere, they're definitely, we're definitely not 100% anonymous in, in that respect. Um, you know, all of our initial investors have signed SAFs through legal agreements and all those kind of things. Uh, in terms of the other sort of risks when it comes to um, rugs, uh, we plan on using uh, multi-sigs for any of the contracts that need to 
redistribute where the yield is coming from. Uh, and in its full longevity, uh, everything will be moved to a 100% decentralized um, system where the DAO will even be in full control of the changes that the platform makes. So essentially where uh, us and the developers won't even have the control of changing things without the DAO's vote. Right. Okay. And is your code open source? Uh, it's not right now, um, just because there is a few competitors in the Cosmos, especially when we we're on Terra. There was two other competitors virtually uh, announced at the same time we announced our build. So for now, it's best for us to not be open sourced. But shortly after launch, yeah, it will all be open sourced. Right. And when do you expect to launch? Uh, so at the moment, our time frame is a little bit sort of still... Um, to be fully ironed out just because we do have a few big tasks ahead of us. But optimistically, we're aiming for three months, but realistically, it's probably going to be four to five months. Right. And we're recording this on July the 18th. So we're looking at uh, possibly November, December for a launch. Yeah. Yeah. We, we would be happy enough if we can get it all launched to the public, the airdrop done and the platform live uh, before the new year. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, just just going back to the rug pull and the security, because there's something you said that I thought was important. So there are projects where, that I know of where the teams are fully doxxed. Everybody knows about them. They've been around for a while. And then for whatever reason, they disappear. Either they yeah. turned out to be scams or they turned out to be shams or they ran out of money or it just wasn't a successful project. So there is that. And there are projects where there's a hell of a lot of anonymity and those projects are still ongoing. Yep. Still in existence, still working. What I would say to anybody who's watching this for this project and any other project, do your own due diligence, go check it out. Don't put in any more than you can afford to lose because that's just really smart anyway, right? Yeah, good principle <laughs> for every project that you might be interested in for sure. <laughs> that's right, because th there's no guarantees in life, absolutely no guarantees. So, um, <clears throat> And it's always good, to, I think, to diversify and have some safe assets like Bitcoin and then some of the – larger blue chip cryptocurrencies, perhaps like Atom, and then some really wild, reckless, adventurous old <laughs> games. Okay. Um, now, ZK Snarks, how and why do you use ZK Snarks? Where do they come in? And how can you use them with, with Atom, which is, you know, transparent? Yeah, so essentially they're there as a, a tool for security and decentralization. Um, they essentially allow the smart contract to verify a proof, um, which is essentially like the hash of a secret phrase that is given out uh, to match a withdrawal with a deposit uh, with essentially minimal information provided from the user. It means we don't have to store user information um, in some kind of centralized database or anything like that. Um, yeah, that, that's essentially real quickly what it is. Um, the depths of, of ZK, honestly, still confuse me a little bit. That's why I'm really glad we have some very competent uh, developers on our team. Our, our lead developer loves ZK, so <laughs> that's great for us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it is, uh, and the, I think, the most secure privacy, uh, a form of private, what is it? It is the most secure way of keeping cryptos private, more secure than ring signatures or coin join or anything like that. Yeah. It's super quick as well um, to verify. Uh, we've also, I, I guess, essentially like in the Cosmos ecosystem and on Cosmosm, uh, we've essentially had to build it from scratch. Uh, for us, there was no existing libraries that we could really draw on heavily. So that took a good couple of months of developer time. All of our developers focused on it. Uh, and that's why essentially we got that audited as soon as we finished it, just to sort of make sure that that key core part of our platform um, was great to build on. So it, it, in a lot of ways, it's a shame that Terra crashed and we had to sort of now port it all over to uh, Osmosis, which is a different version of Cosmosm. Yep. But we're, you know, happy to get it audited again and, and get back to it. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned earlier about how your investors knew, know who you are. Uh, so how have you, when did this project start? And how have you funded yourself so far? How will you continue with funding? Yeah, so um, we've always sort of been more on the side of community, getting a much bigger piece of the pie than private investors and VCs. Um, but we did sort of accept the fact that, that we did need some funding to get off the ground. So about eight months ago, 
probably closer to nine months ago now, uh, we raised uh, 375000 through uh, a private round, uh, selling 5% or 5 million void tokens. Um, that got us pretty much up until when we were ready to launch on Terra. We were about one month away from launching on Terra when the crash happened, um, and we were only two weeks away from our public sale. So, you know, in, in some ways, it's actually a good thing that we hadn't had our public sale and had, you know, a uh, million dollars worth of UST sitting there for the crash. Mm-hmm. That would have hurt dramatically. Um, but we've taken the opportunity to find a new home. Uh, Osmosis really sort of fits that really well as they're trying to build a full suite of DeFi products for the user. Uh, and privacy is going to be an important product that every user is going to have to consider. And I think that that need for privacy is only going to grow and grow as cryptocurrency adoption picks up over time. Uh, in that move, though, we did have to secure funds uh, again because you know we'd been working for eight months off our initial raise, uh, so things were getting low as it was, and then the terror crash just took off the last you know five percent left of what we had. So uh, we applied for a grant through the Osmosis Grants Program. Uh, and we were approved, which was a happy day for us. So we got approved for uh, 250000 US, which gives us a great little runway to continue developing. And then we had a very small strategic round um, of $187,500. Right. Okay. So you so you're funded sufficiently to keep going for a while. Are you going to be doing a public sale? Yeah, so it's always been on the plans to have a public raise to allow the community to get involved. Uh, but then, of course, we also have a, a quite generous airdrop because we've always been a big fan of using that as a tool to not only sort of drum up interest in the project and essentially a form of marketing. Um, it's a great way to reward you know the communities that we're building upon and looking to utilize for the project moving forward. So with the public raise itself, uh, the details are a little bit TBD. Um, Just because like on Terra, we had it all figured out. We were in communication with multiple launch pads to do quite a generic sale of the tokens. Uh, On Osmosis, the the launch pads at the moment, there's not any options. There is a few coming. Um, so we'll be working with them maybe, or we might be hosting it just internally on our web app. Right. Okay. Okay. And roughly when is that likely to happen, the public sale? It would be roughly around a week or two before our launch. Okay. So we're looking towards the end of the year. And yep. um, I'm, it, I'll say it again. I have all the links in the description below if people want to get connected, join the Telegram group and follow them on Twitter and check it out for themselves so you can do your own due diligence. Now, you're also doing a an airdrop. Yeah. So what are the terms of the airdrop? Have you taken the snapshot? Yeah, of course. So uh, we are a little bit sort of um, secretive about when the snapshot itself will be taken, uh, but I can confidently say we have not taken the snapshot just yet. Uh, It's a little bit far out for us. Uh, But when we're getting closer, we definitely won't be sort of talking about whether it's taken, whether it's not taken, or when it will be taken. Um, but yeah, so we're dro- we're airdropping ten percent of the total void supply, which is ten million void tokens. Uh, we're keeping it within the Osmosis ecosystem. So half of that, which is five percent of the total supply, will be going to Osmosis stakers, and then the other half of that will be distributed uh, amongst a few of the Osmosis liquidity pools and the providers to those pools. Right. Um, with the airdrop as well, we do have a whale prevention formula that we've already got built out just to essentially distribute more tokens to the lower um, the lower account balances versus the higher ones. Um, of course, the more you have, the more you will get, but it, I guess it, it kind of drops off on a, on a scaling factor the more assets you're holding versus how much voyage you get. Right, right, okay. All right, so somebody who's got a million Osmo, I wish. I have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, disproportionately. The rata, they're not going to get the same pro rata void tokens as if they had 10 Osmo. Yeah. Right. Okay. And what is the point of the void token? Yeah. So uh, 
like firstly and foremost, the void token is to act as you know a, a governance utility token, um, pretty much guiding the, the path forward for the DAO and enabled staking for the governance. But I guess over the past couple of years, everyone's kind of come to the same um, realization and understanding that a token with the only use case of being a governance token doesn't necessarily cut it unless there's great initiative for the governance to vote on certain propositions. Uh, so we have also tied in some minor uh, value accrual mechanisms into the token just to also sort of give it an extra reason for users to stake their void. So uh, a part of that is the yield that is earned from the anonymity pools. Uh, 5% of all the yield that is earned is actually converted to uh, US stablecoin mm -hmm. and then paid out to governance stakers. So by staking void, you can actually earn a steady income of US stablecoins. Uh, there is also a base fee for using the void anonymity pools of 0.5% right. for any deposit withdrawal into it or out of it. Uh, so by staking 10,000 void, that is completely negated as well. So essentially, if you're a user who is going to be using the void a lot to anonymize funds, then staking 10,000 void is, is well worth it to avoid the fees, but also accrue yield from the pools. Okay. So, so the void, by staking the void token, I'm going to get a share of the yield from the pools, the pool fee. Yep. If I stake 10,000 or more, I don't pay any fees when I use the pool, the mixing yep. pool. Plus also I'm going to get some of the staking rewards in the form of a US stable coin. And you haven't yep. said which one, so I imagine you're still working it out. Yeah, um, it possibly will be USDC, but that's still to be decided. Right. And, and, it's, and this is separate to, I suppose, the staking rewards that are a regular feature of any Cosmos asset. Is that right? Yeah, so the, the regular staking rewards will primarily go to the depositors into the anonymity pools, but then 5% of that yield will be converted to stablecoin and paid out to the governance holders. Okay, so then so rather than staking it through my Kepler wallet and delegating to a validator, I would get more if I stake into the Void smart contract and delegate through a validator through there, Plus, I'd get the additional fees from the share of the fees, plus the um, adding liquidity to the mixer, so that it's actually there's actually coins that that can be exchanged. Yeah, there's there's quite a few different ways that you can earn using our platform. So, and also with the withdrawal fee, when it's not negated, when people are paying the withdrawal fee, that will also be going to the governance stakers of the void. Right. Okay. Okay. Now. Now, when we spoke earlier, I talked about I used Atom as an example, but what are the what are the assets that will be uh, that people can use the mixer for straight away? Yeah, uh, so we're launching with Atom, Osmo, and USDC. So starting just with three uh, on Terra, it was going to be two, but we we figured it was best to have those three on Osmosis. Um, and then future assets will be able to be added, but it will be at the hands of the DAO. Um, but also we will need to take into account how much use each pool is receiving and whether or not there's enough demand to warrant adding a new additional pool into the mix. Right. Okay. So then it's likely to be the larger um, assets, yep. the ones with larger market cap and larger communities, possibly Juno, possibly Evmos. Yeah, we'd expect those ones to be the next ones to be voted upon. Right. Okay. All right. And then um, just back to the airdrop, because you said it's going to go to Osmo stakers and Osmo liquidity providers. Why yep. not to Atom stakers and Juno stakers and Evmo stakers as well? Why just Osmo? Yeah, I guess we could reach out um, further to the other platforms. Our way of incorporating the other sort of networks is through the LPs. So most likely um, there'll be Atom pools in there, Juno pools in there, Evmos pools, all those kind of things. Essentially, um, because we're mainly operating on Osmosis, it's to, I guess, reward the users of Osmosis, but also possibly even 
the people who use all the other networks in the cosmos, if they hear about the airdrop and want to take part, they can, you know, bolster the osmosis platform by providing, you know, to the Atom pool or to the Juno pool. Right. Okay. And and have you said or decided or can you say what the minimum holding for to stake Osmo would be to qualify for the airdrop? Yeah, that's a question we get a lot at the moment. Um, but no, not really. It, it, it does come down to essentially the amount that is being staked when we actually do the snapshot. It's from from a few of our little calculations that we've done on on our earlier um, airdrop avenues on Terra and now on Osmosis. It's going to be quite a small cap, like somewhere between ten and, and fifty or so um osmo staked okay. but yeah it depends depends on the snapshot and the total amount that's staked at that time and then also like our application of our whale prevention formula yeah okay well that kind of makes it sort of reasonable you don't have to have a silly amount to yeah no. <laughs> for the airdrop. we've always been big on sort of rewarding the the littler fish in the ecosystem um more proportionally than the bigger fish Okay. Now, when you launch, will you be uh, tradable on Osmo? Will it just be on the Frontier or on the full decks? Yeah, well, hopefully on the full decks um, for Osmosis. Uh, that's the main focus initially. Uh, after some time, we will eventually hopefully work towards being on some centralized exchanges as well. But really, the main plan is to be on uh, the DEXs throughout um, the Cosmos and then mainly Osmosis. Okay. All right. Well, it's good. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want to let us know? I guess just a little bit more about the the DAO itself and sort of, I, I did say that, you know, we are sort of building it to be completely decentralized. Essentially, what that means is the DAO will be able to vote on every parameter that the system uses, like things like the amount of yield that's distributed to governance, the withdrawal fee, um, the, the minimum amount of void staked to waive that fee, as well as like the treasury usage um, for the, the DAO funds and, and sort of how they're applied. So, oh, and with those parameters, like we essentially want the the void DAO and the collective consciousness of the void DAO to be able to fine tune all of the parameters. Mm -hmm. um, but we have got it set up where there will be like a little bit of a, a cool down for each parameter when it's voted upon and a, a limit of how much it can be changed with each vote as well. So it doesn't jump all over the place. It'll be like essentially a slow move from where it's at initially to ideally what are the perfect parameters for the platform. Okay, and when are you looking at being becoming fully decentralized? How long do you reckon it would take? Yeah, so it's definitely a, a little bit of work. Um, I guess we've sort of broken it down to phases. Mm -hmm. So phase one is just building our, our platform, getting it all live, including the public raise and the airdrop um, and having our token live. Then phase two is major um, focus is decentralization. So getting everything ready to make the code open source, uh, building the governance and the DAO and empowering the DAO. So we would really hope that within a few months after launch, we will have a fully decentralized platform for the users. Great. Okay, well, thank you for that. Anything else you want to let us know that we haven't covered already? Yeah, one other part that I didn't mention about the airdrop, which I mean, a lot of the closer community sort of had worries about the airdrop being a 10%. It is quite large compared to a lot of other airdrops in the space. Um, we did have a system in place to kind of, um, I guess, spread the airdrop out a little bit and also um, find a way for the airdrop to benefit the void platform as well as, you know, the communities receiving the airdrop. So uh, we actually implemented uh, a gamified airdrop system. So essentially uh, one third, the first third of the airdrop will be claimable on launch for anyone who is eligible for the airdrop. But then the remaining two thirds uh, is broken up into three checkpoints. So to receive each 
additional portion of their airdrop, or essentially to unlock each additional portion of the airdrop, uh, the user must um, actually interact with the void anonymity pools and store funds for a total of 31 days for each wow. unlock. So essentially, it's a mechanism to try to capture a little bit of TVL back from all of the uh, community and users that received the airdrop. Right. Okay. So let's say I qualify for 300 void tokens. Yeah. I, I get 100 first off. Yeah. But the subsequent 200, it depends upon me engaging with the application in some way or other. So yeah. I, then I can take my 100 and then deposit them in the in the pool, then that will qualify me for the next round. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, essentially that. So uh, the total unlock time uh, is a minimum of three months for the right. entire airdrop. So essentially, it gives it a slightly longer unlock portion. Uh, I imagine there's even going to be some users that maybe don't even want the extra um, portions. They'll be happy with just their first third. But again, after time, maybe the void token does well and our platform becomes more trusted, then yeah. it might encourage users to come back and actually use the platform, store some TVL, and unlock the rest of their airdrops as well. Right. Okay. Now, could would I be able to then, once I get the first 100, go to Osmosis, buy another 100? I've now got 200. Is that going to increase the remaining balance that I'll get on the airdrop? No. No, that wouldn't change it. The airdrop will just be final at the snapshot. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. With uh, Bitsquid, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to let us know that we haven't covered? Um, I think that's everything um, that I can think of for the time being, for sure. Okay. All right. Well, look, very cool. Like I said, again, before, and I'll say it again, I'll have all the links in the description below. And one thing we haven't covered and spoken about is why a mixer, but I think I can just cover that by saying that you, without privacy, there is no freedom because we end up living in a in a surveillance state and what we need as governments get more and more authoritarian is we need decentralized mechanisms to preserve our privacy so that we can preserve our freedom. Yeah, I can agree with that. I, I often like to just, um, a lot of, a lot of users, you know, some reason, um, attribute privacy to crime or nefarious activities, but I like to sort of point out that, you know, we have privacy in our current financial system. We may not have it to the governing authority um, bodies in our worlds, but we have individual privacy whenever we transact at a coffee shop or we pay a friend out of our bank account. You know, uh, that friend or the coffee shop employee can't then put in our bank account number and look at our entire financial history from day one. So I think it's huge to be able to just reset your chain of financial history every so often when you want to essentially like one of the one of the biggest ways i foresee people using void is, is setting themselves up with private hot wallets like oh i need to transact every day in crypto or i want to buy an nft and then share it on my my social media then i can make a private hot wallet to do that transaction and then i can share it or i can transact with my friends and all they'll be able to see is let's say for example that thousand dollars that i put in my private hot wallet Right, right, right. And then they can transact freely. Very yeah, cool. okay. without the fear of their entire history being revealed. <laughs> yes. And then I think also what your system offers is without the uh, hassle and the fees of if you wanted to break the chain, then converting the Atom to Pirate Chain or Monero and then sending it from one of those Pirate Chain or Monero addresses to another Pirate Chain or Monero address and then converting it back to Atom. That'll cost yeah. a lot in terms of time and also in fees. So this will be a whole lot easier. Yeah, and, and like, I don't see any of the other platforms or especially the privacy blockchains as competitors. You know, they all serve their own use case and they're all needed for different reasons. Like... For even example, secret, you know, they're on the they're in the Cosmos ecosystem as well, but they're enabling a different type of, of privacy. They're enabling private by default applications to be built. Whereas our our main focus is just to keep it really simple, really easy. Uh, a platform users know how to use already, most users, uh, and keep it on Osmosis where a lot of users well, it's already it's the biggest DEX on on Cosmos and one of the biggest in DeFi, uh, where users are already depositing their their Cosmos assets. So essentially trying to help fulfill the osmosis dream of being a one-stop shop for DeFi. 
Yes, very good, very good. We like that very much. I think Osmosis <laughs> is an absolutely fabulous Dex, best one I've ever used. Yes, and, uh, so intuitive. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, a lot to come that's promising, you know, not just Void Protocol projects, but what they're doing themselves, plus other projects that will be launching on that Dex and bringing other chains as well that are going to be interoperable. Bitsquid, thank you so much for this conversation. Um, you know, I'll have all the links in the description below. I do invite people to go check this out if you have any comments or questions. And also, I forgot to say, please follow me on Odyssey. If you're watching this on YouTube, come over to Odyssey because I'm not shadow banned on Odyssey and it just supports my work if you support me on Odyssey. Also, please follow me on Twitter, uh, CryptoRichYT, and join my official Telegram announcements channel. Biscuit, thank you awesome. so much. No, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Great. You're so welcome. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Bitsquid signing up. All the best. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. See ya.